This is big breaking emergency news. The United Nations just passed their quote pact for the future and lawmakers are warning that this could be a major problem for the United States and its sovereignty. They are warning that the U.S. is handing over their rights and their powers to the United Nations and the World Health Organization from this pact and this treaty that just passed Sunday, September 22nd. So let's get into all the details here. Really quick, guys, please just hit that like, hit that subscribe. I'm posting multiple videos a day, keeping you guys updated on all this big, urgent news, and it just helps to get these warnings out. I appreciate that. So this pact was just passed at the UN assembly that is being held September 22nd and September 23rd. They just passed this quote pact for the future. And these congressmen are warning that this could allow the UN and the World Health Organization, these treaties that we are entering into, could allow them to take over certain types of emergencies inside the U.S. and have governing authority over them. So I want you to listen to what these reps said. This is Rep. Bob Good from Virginia and also Ralph Norman from South Carolina. And they're warning that this treaty that is being pushed by the U.N. and the World Health Organization is going to strip the U.S. of its, of its sovereignty. Listen to this right here from this press conference. They don't want us to be subordinate to or governed by our Constitution. No, they want America to be subordinate to and governed by the U.N., the World Health Assembly, and the WHO. And in fact, they intend to join with others at the U.N. summit this week to vote to award additional powers to the U.N. Secretary General. They seek to facilitate the evolution of the UN from an international cooperative body to an international governing body. These powers would be triggered by any one of a number of so-called global emergencies, whether it was a so-called climate emergency, a health emergency, a cyber emergency, or a gun violence emergency, whatever that's supposed to be, a financial emergency, or whatever they deem appropriate. And the Biden-Harris administration is in full agreement with the UN and the WHO on efforts to place us under their authority and require such things as their international health regulations, including the surveillance of U.S. citizens, the censoring of dissenting views, and much more. The American people didn't vote for this, and they don't support this, and it's up to the people's representatives, that's us gathered here today, to have a responsibility to expose this and to reject this. The U.S. should defund the WHO again, we should withdraw from the WHO. Any agreements with the WHO or the UN should require Senate approval or disapproval. And a bipartisan House majority voted to require Senate approval just last week with Tom Tiffany's bill on the House floor. So I'm proud to be joined here by my House colleagues and others who are appropriately concerned and educated, informed, and leading on this issue. Again, this is the most important issue that's getting the least amount of attention relative to its importance and its impact on our country and on the American people. And with that, I yield to the gentleman from South Carolina, Ralph Norman. Thank you, Congressman Good. Um, I want to thank Frank Gaffney, Tony Perkins, all my colleagues for taking a lead role in this. As Congressman Good, Good said, this is probably, other than our financial crisis this country's in, the most important issue to call attention to. Uh, the summit of the future will happen on September 22nd, 23rd. And folks, what that will do is cede America's authority, America's sovereignty to basically China. China is defined as a developing country. It is the number two economy behind America. It's not developing. It will cede our decision-making ability to China. That's what you need to know. Let me read out what uh, the Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, his policy brief, too, issued on March of 2023. I propose that the General Assembly provide the Secretary General and the United Nations system with a standing authority to convene and operationalize automatically an emergency platform in the event of a future complex global shock of sufficient scale. Guess who determines that? 
the, the World Health Organization. It, it reveals in their definition a possible global, comp, a global shock, including large-scale climate or environmental events determined by who? The Secretary General. Future pandemics. We all noticed, all endured what the uh, problem we had with the latest virus. High impact events involving a biological agent determined by who? The World Health Organization. Disruption of global flows of goods determined by who? Not America, but the WHO under the Secretary General. Not only that, it requires a 5% payment by the United States every year of our total medical dollars spent, which are in the trillions. Bottom line, we cannot let this go. This is a top line issue that America must be made aware of. It's got to go through the Senate where it requires 60 votes. And we're going to fight to make sure all Americans know what's happening and stop it dead in its tracks. The WHO needs to be defunded, needs to be do away, we need to do away with it, and America get out of it. All right, so that was Congressman Ralph Norman from South Carolina. And he made some key points there. He was saying that the World Health Organization and the United Nations could declare a, quote, climate emergency. They also could declare a, quote, health emergency, a global health emergency, like we've seen recently. And they also could declare a supply chain emergency as well, too, right? And it would give them governing powers if any one of these things happened and they declared an emergency for it all right this is big because these things could go together as well too all right if there is a health emergency they could also take control of the supply chain and then the world health organization this is all part of the treaty i've made a few videos on this already but it is now being approved by the un and then it has to be approved by the senate as well too for us to adopt it all right so there's one more barrier left in the senate but it could potentially be adopted all right so and even if it's not adopted by the senate the president has the discretion to voluntarily follow this treaty anyways all right but if it is passed by the senate then they have to follow it it's a binding treaty with this global governance body and with all these other countries signed on too all right so this is big and during a health crisis a global health emergency it would also give them power over the supply chain and things like medicines and medications the world health organization would be able to have power over where these things are distributed to all right we're already seeing this right now with this mpox in africa okay the world health organization is asking all these countries like the u.s france there's been a couple different countries that have been sending resources and medications to africa and the un world health organization could mandate things like that and they could also mandate and control where certain life-saving medications go during these emergencies so and it would be based on things like equity okay so they could decide that there's enough you got enough in the u.s you got enough of this life-saving medication we are now redistributing it to other countries that need it more right now or are more equitable Okay, that's all in the treaty. I've read through this thing multiple times and they have signed this pact for the future at the UN. All right, so this is big. Let me know what you guys think down below. Please just hit it up for me down there to help get these warnings out. I appreciate that. This is something that they're working on in the background, right? We could see this activated and they could be trying to pass this too before november for multiple reasons maybe they want to activate it before november before the end of the year or maybe they just want to get it to pass before the end of the year and solidify it so no matter who is president it doesn't matter okay you're now binded to 
this global health treaty and you have to follow these rules and regulations or you're going to be sued and have problems with these other countries and the UN, the World Health Organization, all these things, right? So that could be what is going on here. And it is taking away U.S. sovereignty and U.S. decision-making and giving that to the World Health Organization and the UN, which is just a conglomerate of countries. And a lot of the countries are not allies. They're adversarial to the U.S., okay? Countries like China, they have weighted voting power in the U.N., right? And they could make decisions that could hurt the United States during one of these emergencies or crisis or even vote to declare a crisis or emergency inside the U.S., all right? So, and we remember what happened last time in 2020, all right? Supply chains were shut down. China was going through factory to factory and shutting them down, right? And the supply chain was a wreck. And that was part of the reason why is because China just decided, all right, this factory makes these products for this country or the U.S. And we're going to shut it down, right? It was a major test and what they could do. And the next time something happens, they declare this global health emergency. We could see clampdowns even harder and we could see supply chain disruptions even more, okay? It would give them control even not just over medicine, but all types of things during one of these emergencies, they would have control over the supply of goods, even things like oil and energy. All these things can be redistributed during these emergencies and they could tell the US, you have enough, you don't need this, this other country needs it now, China needs it more right now, or whatever country, it could be any country. They need it more because they have more cases, they're under a bigger crisis, so this shipment is now going to them instead of the US. Sorry, this is a very murky waters we are moving towards, all right? So let me know what you guys think. I hope you guys are staying prepared and staying ready. Make sure you're stocked up in case we do see any of these things happen. I hope you have big blessings for your life and your family, and I hope you have a big old blessed day.